Hey, this is Marie from DIY Montreal, and today I'm going to show you how to make a round cutting board and turn it into a Lazy Susan. For this project, I used three types of hardwood, cherry, walnut, and maple. Since I'm working with raw lumber, I started by cutting off the end before cutting a few pieces to rough length, slightly longer than the final dimensions that I need. I then ran the pieces on the joiner several times until the bottom face was flat. I could then flip that face up against the fence to joint the edge. After that, I ran the boards a few times through my planer until the top face was nice and flat too. Note that the boards don't all need to be the same thickness at this point. Next, I set my table saw to rip the boards just wider than I want the final thickness of my cutting board to be. Since the blanks will be flipped 90 degrees before glue up, this way they'll all be the same thickness. I also wanted a few thinner strips of walnut, so I ripped down some of my blanks into thinner strips. After deciding on a pattern, it's time for glue up. Since this board will be about 18 inches wide and my planner is only 12 inches wide, I'm going to do this glue up in two parts that'll assemble afterwards. Since this Lazy Susan is intended for food like cheeses and charcuterie, I made sure to use a food safe glue like Type Bond 2 or Type Bond 3 that are both food safe and water resistant. After letting both parts dry overnight, I could then run them through my planer a few times on each side of the board, one after the other, so that both the top and the bottom sides were flattened and both boards planed down to equal thickness. I can now assemble both parts, but I noticed that the joint wasn't perfectly straight, so I did a quick pass on the jointer to flatten the inside edges. I can now assemble both parts by simply using some glue. It's important to get this joint flush, so take your time here. It helps to use small clamps along the joint to help get both surfaces perfectly lined up. I almost forgot, but you'll also need a second smaller board for the bottom part of the Lazy Susan. For this, I simply plane two boards on face and glued them up. To cut out the circles, I'm going to use my router with a homemade circle cutting jig. To make the jig, I first need to remove the bottom plate from my router. I flipped the plate over onto a piece of thin plywood and marked out the four screw holes and roughly marked the center hole that I then drilled out using a large Forstner bit. Then using a smaller Forstner bit, I countersunk the four screw holes using the depth stop on my drill press. I could then drill all the way through those holes using a bit slightly larger than the size of my router screws. After screwing the plywood onto the router and installing an upspiral bit, I traced out a center line onto the board. You can then make a pilot hole for the desired size of the circle's radius. I made my hole at 8 inches since I wanted a 16 inch wide circle. Next I found the center of my board and made a very small pilot hole. To use the jig, I simply put a small nail through both holes and tapped it in with a hammer. I first took a shallow pass going clockwise and progressively lowered my bit after each full revolution. You'll also want to vacuum up the sawdust regularly to make it easier on your router. Ideally, you should use a plunge router for this, but since I don't have one, I manually plunged the bit each time I lowered the bit and it worked out just fine. Eventually I made it all the way through and was left with a nice round circle. And this was probably the most satisfying part of the project for me. I repeated the exact same process for the bottom circle, simply adjusting the size of the radius to make it smaller. Okay, so now I have both parts of my Lazy Susan that I'm going to assemble with this turntable hardware. But before I do that, I have a little more prep work to do, like rounding over all the edges, and of course, a little sanding. I started at 80 grit, and progressively made my way all the way up to 220 grit. Now since the board will be washed, I'm going to water pop the board and let it dry in order to raise the grain before sanding it once again with 220 grit. There are different ways to mount the hardware, and I'll show you the one that I used. My biggest concern was to get the hardware perfectly centered. I started by measuring the distance between the holes and setting my compass to exactly half that length. I then drew a circle using the center hole left behind by the circle jig. Next I drew a line through the circle. It doesn't matter where you draw it, as long as it passes through the center point. I adjusted my compass to make the opening wider, then drew two arcs using the intersects as pivot points. 
I then drew another line through the circle using the spot where the arcs intersect and the center point as guidelines. Both lines should now intersect at 90 degrees and should line up with the holes in the hardware. I used a small bit to make pilot holes all the way through so the holes would be transferred to the opposite side. It was at this point that I realized my mistake. I should be using the tiny little holes for the bottom plate, but luckily this was an easy fix. I measured the distance between those holes and adjusted my compass to make the new markings. After drilling the new pilot holes, I flipped the board over and countersunk the holes using a small Forstner bit and the depth stop on my drill press. The hole should be big enough for the screws that come with the hardware kit. I then repeated the whole process to mark the holes for the top board and drilled some shallow pilot holes, this time making sure not to drill all the way through. Before attaching the hardware, I gave it one final sanding, then vacuum and wiped off all of the sawdust. I finished the board with some food grade mineral oil, applying a generous coat and letting it sit for 20 minutes. I repeated this process four times and then finished up by wiping off all the excess oil. I could now line up the hardware with the pre-drilled hole starting with the top and screwing it down, and then position the bottom piece and screwed it down from above. Hey, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thanks for watching.